Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Patrick Delson um, from Reach Markets. Tonight we're joined by Brian Corman, who is uh, someone who trades with us, uh, I've known for some time, uh, to talk about how he approaches trading. I've also got Ivan Cherylov online as well. And uh, tonight's session is something that we are working on and are going to be doing every week and well, most weeks anyway, let's say that, um, where we, we get someone other than ourselves to come in and talk about how they trade, how they approach the market. Could be a funds manager, could be a private trader like you, uh, could be uh, someone from the industry. Next week it's Graham O'Brien who heads up equity derivatives at the ASX and just have a chat about what they do and how they approach things. Um, we've got uh, a lot of clients who are very successful traders uh, and do a lot in their trading, uh, very, very active and uh, earn a living out of it. So there's plenty of people that have got a lot to offer and it's really interesting just personally as a trader hearing from someone who's done the work uh, and has an approach that, that works and uh, hearing what they, they have to say and, uh, you know, and hearing their stories. And, you know, we all go through a lot as traders. We have great good times, bad times and the like, and it's really good to be able to share our experiences with other like-minded people. So uh, welcome along today, Brian. Good day, thank you. Well, sounds worth it and clear. Uh, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll just go through the normal housekeeping disclaimers and so forth, and then, uh, and Ivan, are you online as well? I am. I'm just sitting there quietly ready for you to say the general advice warning. All right. All right. Well, I'll, I'll get to that. Uh, so let me <laughs> open from... I was leaving the talk until you do it. Well, I'd, I'd skip past the, 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 the pretty picture of Ivan there. Uh, any advice contained in this presentation is general only. It doesn't take into consideration your personal circumstances and you need to decide whether it's appropriate for you. Past returns are not an accurate indicator of future returns. We only give general advice. And options are risky. Right? You should not trade them unless you know what you're doing, And which is why we're big believers in education um, and the like. So... Um, yeah, so again, thank you very much for taking the time and joining us tonight. And we're talking about, might just do a, 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 a short introduction uh, to you, Brian, but uh, we're going to be talking about a, a way that you trade. So this, this conversation came about uh, between Brian and ourselves uh, a little while ago. Uh, we were running a trading session. I think I was talking about a strategy that I was trying to price up a long straddle. Uh, which is a strategy to go long volatility. And Brian popped a question in there, is would you consider going uh, and trading? It was a, one particular stock and then followed up with an email and some research on it, and, and which I loved. It was awesome. So we um, then started talking about this particular strategy. It was reporting season at the time. It was probably a bit late for me to get in there and start trading uh, this, but it is a certain style of trading that I used to do years ago a lot of, um, when I had a little bit more time to look at the market and, um, and it's definitely something that uh, I want to get back into. So for me, I'm, I'm listening in on tonight's session with a lot of interest and I'm going to be looking at uh, following this type of approach uh, and most likely we'll, we'll, we'll do some trades over the coming weeks. There's a few things to trade coming up, um, not, not a whole heap. But um, yeah, but uh, so uh, Brian's going to come in and, and, and share some of this. Just quickly on ourselves, if you're coming to this session and, you, and it's the first time you're doing a REACH Markets, REACH trading session. Um, we are the education partners of the ASEX. The ASEX uses our technology for their options trading game. Uh, we've built uh, an implied volatility platform. It's the best options trading technology in Australia, no question. It's the latest, and we keep building and we keep working on it. Um, we do a bunch of other stuff at REACH Markets, but uh, in, we're, we're in this hat, we are very, very focused and very, very passionate about options trading and doing whatever it takes to help people who trade options be successful trading options. And technology is really a very, very important part of all of that. So, um, Brian, I might just sort of skip out of this part of the presentation for the time being and um, we can get back to what long straddles are in a moment. But uh -huh. um, when did you get into trading? What, what was the... what 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 started it all for you? Uh, I think I placed my first equity trade probably 30 years ago um, and really was really unaware of options until probably eight or so years ago 
Uh, I'd kind of heard of them, heard they were risky and kind of stayed away from them. Um, decided I should get myself educated to learn how risky they really were and went off and did myself a course, um, which is where you and I first sort of bumped into each other. Um, so the, the bit I like about options obviously is, you know, without massive amounts of capital, you can take a, a reasonably um, sort of, uh, I guess, a, a position that, you know, if um, uh, managed well, you can kind of limit your risk and, you know, if you're if you're lucky enough for things to go your way, then the leverage that options provide can, can kind of make it for quite a nice return on, like I say, a fairly small amount of capital. So, and obviously, if you're an equity kind of guy, then um, that's great when the market's going up. If the market's falling, then you've got two choices, either sell or, you know, hold and hope. Um, options gives you an option, or, or I guess, the, the possibility of, you know, making money as the market goes in all different directions. So I like the flexibility, I like the, the kind of capital allocation um, and those sorts of those sorts of things really, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and, and in terms of, um, you know, what you get out of options, is it like just, is it is it all about the money? Is it ultimately like why, why, why no, go down? Um, yeah, yeah, so I guess I'm, I'll be 57 at, you know, in October, got half an eye on uh, retirement, you know, want to keep my mind active, want to keep everything else active. So, so, and there's nothing like having a bit of skin in the game to kind of keep your attention. So, you know, by, by um, having, having money in the market, it, it almost forces you to, to kind of stay in touch with what's going on around the world. And clearly you'd need to be under a rock to know there's, there's not a fair bit of turmoil at the moment, but even when it's not, you know, um, what are interest rates up to, what's gold up to, you know, what's going on around the world. So, you know, before you even enter a trade, it's good to know, you know, what the general market's going done, what the sector that, that that particular stock is in is up to, what's the stock itself up to. And it just forces you to kind of, I, I, I guess I use the word force, it isn't really force, but it kind of encourages you to, to kind of yeah. stay in touch. And that's another thing I really kind of like about it. Yeah, yeah, you know, I understand. How much time? Uh, I mean, you've been in isolation for a while now. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, Brian actually came along to the meetup we did at the ASX. Uh, geez, well, that seems like third of March, a month third ago. Yeah, third of March. Uh, I think it, was. It, it feels like another uh, another lifetime ago. But um, uh, any at, at a sling on. So you've been basically bunkered down for a while. If you're not bunkered down like that, how much time would you put into your trading each day? Uh, I guess I've, I've got typically a fair bit of interest, you know, around the kind of opening, so around sort of 10 to 11. Uh, and, you know, through using apps on phones and those sorts of things, it's it's not difficult to kind of keep half an eye on things um, during meetings or phone calls or just, you know, walk in between meetings or whatever you're up to. So so answer your question, mate, probably, probably an I guess during the trading, the, the kind of, you know, 10 to 4 period, um, I'd probably give up an hour of that, I guess, when, when I yeah. kind of add it all together. And then over night time, you know, I've got a bit of data entry, which I'll show you guys, and obviously a bit of research and attend events like this and those sorts of things as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so your routine, uh, do you do much before market opens? So what, what's your routine look like? Um, yeah, so I, I would say um, I wake up every morning, the first thing I do is look at my phone and say, and look at what's the US market done, what's gold done, what's oil done. Yep. Um, those three things. So, and then I get out of bed <laughs> and go off and sort of start my day. On the way to work, I'll be looking at, um, you know, uh, what's the SPY done, you know, so what's the market likely to open up or down or flat. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, look look for maybe uh, news events on stocks that I've either that I, I either hold or intend to to kind of when I say stocks, I'm talking about options that I either hold or you know intend to hold, and say, well, you know, what does that mean? Maybe I want to get in, maybe I don't. So that's on the way to work. I've got about an hour each way uh, commute to the office, um, and then yeah, it's sort of typically um, around the kind of quarter to ten, five to ten. I'll probably um, if 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 not before, I'll have opened up my browser and and be there kind of ready with my uh, 
um, implied volatility platform open and ready to play. Ready yeah. To play. Okay. Um, yeah. So, in, in, in going into uh, what what do you look at? So, what are the things that you look at and observe in terms of making a decision to trade? So, there's a in general market looking about, but what are the things that um, that you observe? to arrive at a conclusion that you've got some sort of an edge that you can make money out of? Uh, yep, okay. So I'll, I'll typically look at price action over multiple time periods. So look at a weekly chart, a daily chart, those sorts of things and just see where I think the price may be heading. Um, I look at you know um, announcements, news events, um, look at things like that just to sort of confirm maybe some of my thinking. I'll be looking at things like you know, when's the Reserve Bank board due to, to meet next? Obviously it was today, happened to be today, funnily enough. Um, you know, and what's, what are the kind of various market commentators saying about things like interest rates? What will that mean for the banks? You know, like I said before, the, the price of oil, what will that mean for Santos? What will it mean for Woodside? So I kind of, you know, just look at things going on around and say, well, okay, I'll, I can see um, price action trending in a certain direction or, you know, flat. Um, there's announcements coming or there isn't, you know, are those announcements going to likely to um, send the price in the direction that's consistent with the current trend? Do I want to therefore, you know, open up a, a kind of um, direction sensitive uh, trade or do I want to go an iron condor? Um, okay. Just those, those sorts of things. Yeah. Okay. And so you like to, um, whereas I trade purely technically, um, in most instances, or look maybe for an event, but don't try and predict what's going to happen. You're actually looking at the fundamental information as well, trying to match that with technicals. Am I correct in saying that, mate? You know what? I'm when I think about it, I'm I'm probably eighty plus percent technical. Um, yep. The others is just used to kind of confirm what I think may happen. Yeah. Um, and so, talk to me about trading into a reporting season. What what got you into what you look at there? And is it now a good time to share back your screen? Yeah, yeah. If you don't mind, I might do that. Yeah. Now, um, for the what is it? Fifty three people on the call. Um, I'm going to show you a screen, um, a couple of screens it's using Microsoft Excel. Don't be upset or concerned about the all the different colours. It's just. Um, a way of me, I use a feature of, of Excel called uh, conditional formatting and I want to just show you all, um, this is Im implied volatility rank um, of a variety of stocks for the period leading up to the February reporting season and my observation here is that, that almost without exception, you know, if I look at the day of an announcement, I'll go start from the very top. Um, AGL had their announcement, their earnings announcement, um, half year announcement on the 13th of February. Um, if I was to go back a number of days, um, which is like 30, 30 days, I'll, I'll look back and the IV rank was four. Um, the day before the announcement, the IV rank was 54. On the 12th, it was 54. So I think to myself, that's got to have an impact on, on the price of an option. Oh, for those who've done, I guess, the work, the Black-Scholes model talks about, um, in broad terms, options pricing is, is a function of the underlying price, the volatility and time. Um, so if I look at um, uh, IV rank changing from 4 to 54 um, over you know, 30 business days, um, that's got to have an impact on, on, on option, option value. Um, so you'll have time working against you, and in this case, uh, IV rank or in, uh, the volatility of the stock working for you. So if you can have the volatility change and the price change um, together override or beat the time um, decay, then you're, you're likely going to be on a winner. So that's just AGL. Like I say, if you pick one, anyone. Um, What's another one? Let's let's pick A and Z. That's what be good for the next the next bit. So, no, I can't. Sorry, they didn't they didn't um, have an earnings announcement. Um, CCL doesn't doesn't really matter. If I if I look look back, you know, 30 days to the left, um, 
you know, you go from 14 to 65, you go from, in other words, you go from single digits or, you know, teens, something in the teens, to something above 50, well and truly above 50. Um, I would argue you could, for this, for this conversation, you could probably not discuss or not talk about the implied volatility um, rank in the last week of February because the whole coronavirus thing started to kick in and the volatility just went through the roof. So um, in you know general terms, um, you know Fortitude, uh, sorry, uh, Fortescue Metals go from in the in the teens to almost 80 the day before. So my kind of general theory here is that hey, if I'm to place a trade um, a, a long straddle where I don't really care whether the, the 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 underlying stock value goes up or down, so long as it goes up or down a lot. And if the IV and if the volatility increases a lot, then I've I've probably got a decent chance of making money, even though I've got time working against me. So that was Brian, the February. What, what, yep. yeah, Brian, what I might do is because um, you're mentioning long straddles, is just do a quick tutorial on what a long straddle yep. is, absolutely, and sure. uh, and then we can come back to it because yep. um, it's quite relevant um, yep. if you're uh, if. Uh, you know, if you haven't traded this type of strategy before, so I'm just going to change myself back. Um, share my screen. All right. All right. So, what is a long straddle? All right. So it's a, a trade that you can profit if the market moves in either direction. So your your view is that. Um, not that it's going to go up or down, it's that it's going to go up or down quite a bit. So if you're setting this trade up, where you might trade it is off a major pivot point in the market. So you might say, oh, this is a major support line, like a 52-week high or something like that where you're going, if it breaks through here, it's going to go up significantly. If it's not, that it's going to fail at this level and come off. So I'm setting myself at that level and I've got a view that it's going to go up or down, but I don't know of which um, if it stays flat, you can lose, right? Now, Ryan's been talking about trading volatility. Uh, you can also make money out of this if, this if it stays flat, but volatility changes significantly, which is something that can occur during uh, when you go into that reporting season, is that, that there's lots of speculation going on about, around um, what's happening in the market and or what's happening around that stock. The share price could go up and down and end up at the same point, but the overall volatility um, is uh, goes up significantly. Uh, Carl has asked a question, came in a bit late to the webinar, is there a way for me to, to locate daily implied volatility data? Yeah, we, we provide live volatility data, so we'll I'll show you that a little bit later on, but Carl, yeah, you, you can, all right? So, um, what is a long straddle? You buy a call option and a put option at the same time. Now, for anyone that is new to trading or new to options and you're sitting there going, I don't even know what a call put option is, um, I'll give you a quick tutorial on it now, but just type in education into the chat box and we'll send you out an education program on options trading. So we've got the crash course on options running at the moment. So we'll send you 10 videos, the introductory stuff, and then we've got a whole bunch of other stuff in there. So if you're new to this, Type in education and we'll get you set up. All right, a call option appreciates in value when the share price goes up. A put option appreciates in value when, it, when, when the share price goes down. So if we're buying both at the same time, we want the share price to move either enough um, or the value of that option to be affected by the increase in volatility, which Brian mentioned before, one of the main, main factors that impacts what an option price will do. All right. So um, what we expect to happen is that why, why I enter into this is volatility will increase. Um, so I think that volatility will be low relative to where I think it's going to go next. So, you know, volatility at the moment is high relative to where it was six weeks ago, but arguably you could start saying, but I think it's getting to the lower end for where it is in the new norm or in the current market, all right? So just in terms of a payoff, the maximum profit on this site is is unlimited, or, or you know, or on the on the downside, on the put side, the share price can't fall below zero, but this share price can rock it up. And the maximum loss 
is the premium that I paid for buying the call and the put option at the start of the trade. Right. Uh, difficulty, <laughs> we've got this down at 70%. I'd like to show that, but I don't really know what it means. Uh, the um, it, and, I, and this is a trade that I did. Well, maybe it's one I did, but at least I would have been probably doing it at this point in time, um, where the market was up at seventy one sixty two, um, and you know at that level there was a couple of things going on. One is I mentioned I don't trade fundamentals; I trade technicals. This was at a level where we're breaking a fifty two week high, so we. You, when we break these levels, if we go back to this period here, you know, it usually runs up or here. You know, it might be a breakout and then be a fake out. So I expect there to be a significant move in one direction or the other, right? Um, or volatility to increase. So I'll be careful about buying it at a price that I think volatility is cheap. All right, so going to the setup of the trade in this instance here, long straddle, um, it's quite a simple process in our platform is you just type into the cookbook long straddle and it shows you at, and it prices it up. So you can see I'm buying a call option and a put option. Uh, this was on the XJO at, and I was buying it at 7100 uh, at back, back, back in time when I put this presentation together um, that my maximum loss was 69, uh, 6900 um, and here is a picture of a payoff diagram. So I'm going through that too quickly. Here's a picture of a payoff diagram. So if the share price moves quickly, uh, this was on the day, then my profit, the, the longer I'm in the trade, the more I needed to move to make a profit, right? Um, and so when we set strategies up like this, we can trade them in different ways. The way that I would trade a long straddle in the example I've given is I would trade against the clock. So if you're saying I'm happy to give up a little, lose a bit of money on time, um, then, you know, and, and, you know, so if I sit in there, I expect a move to happen, but it needs to happen in the next 10 days. So when I say I'm risking 6,900, I'm not risking 6,900. I'm not intending to stay in the trade all the way through to expiry. I'm only ex expecting to stay in there for 10 days to get the move to happen. And if it doesn't, then I might have lost 1,000 or 1,500 bucks, depending on what's going on. All right. So, um, yeah, so this is the, in, in, in that example here, 14 days in the trade, if it went sideways or sideways to down, I'm risking 6,000. I don't only want to be in there for 10. Would I be risking, if I'd stayed in there for that period, 2,428 bucks, not the, the full amount that was there. Um, but you can see if it goes up or it goes down, quickly I can make money. Um, and if it goes up or down over time, I can still make, still make money on the move, all right? Um, but the big impact would be if volatility um, was to trigger and, and get a move on there. All right. So that's a long straddle. That's um, we buy a call and a put um, and we go into the trade. Brian, I might hand back to yourself now to talk about why we trade this, that strategy going into, um, into a, you know, a, a reporting season. Mm hmm Do I show my screen again? Is that right? Yeah, I'm just handing it back. Sorry. All right, right. Thank you. Yeah. Back to the colourful Excel. Can you guys see that? Yep. Yes. Yep. So, um, as Patrick mentioned, you know. Uh, volatility increases um, the closer that we get to an actual earnings announcement, and you know most most earnings announcements are actually done uh, the, on before trade on a day. Um, and so, if you're wanting to get out of um, out of a, a trade, you obviously need to get out of it you know before close the previous day. Otherwise, you get a, a significant um, volatility decrease because the unknown. That was yesterday, and in other words, people didn't know what the the, the announcement was was going to be, whether the you know profits up, down, or well, there's issues or you know whatever that's going to because the announcement hadn't actually come out. There's an awful lot of um, um, implied volatility built in or um, built into the op option uh, price. So um, whereas the following day, the cat's out of the bag and and the volatility drops fairly significantly. So. My thesis is that if I can place a trade um, 
uh, a long straddle into the market, you know, 30 or thereabouts days before uh, the announcement. Uh, that's uh, business days before the announcement. Then, uh, and that gives plenty of time for uh, volatility to rise. Plenty of time for um, the stock price to move before the actual announcement. So that's different implied volatility um, for each stock during the kind of January leading up to February announcements. If I switch over to the May announcements, my Excel will play uh, nicely. So I'm um, looking at four um, stocks. They're all banks, so ANZ, Macquarie, NAB and Westpac. You'll see by the grey boxes. Um, when I first did this particular sheet, the, the grey area went back 30, 30 business days. Um, it's getting shorter and shorter as time goes by. But if I go back 30 days before the, the ANZ announcement, um, uh, clearly uh, I'm not going to place a long straddle into the market when implied volatility is you know, close to 100. Um, it's got it's got nowhere to go. Like as uh, Patrick said, you you make money if if the volatility increases. Um, clearly, if you're in the in the 90s, then there's not much um, not much uh, room for it to go up. And so, uh, I've actually waited for um, implied volatility to drop. And in fact, yesterday. Um, I opened a long straddle in ANZ at 1650. That's a long put and a long call, uh, expiring May the 28th. So that's that's over here somewhere, off 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 into the future. Um, and yeah, we'll see how that how that goes. I don't know, Patrick, whether you want to have a look at it on the on the pricing a bit later on. Uh, yeah, that's up to you, mate. Um, so that's that's I guess my thesis. Um, the others, uh, Macquarie's now got an implied volatility score of 36. Um, this is a close of business today, um, guys. Um, the NAB's at 45, Westpac's at 48. So they've all come down. They've all would have been at 100 at some point, you know, back here in March when when things are really going crazy. Um, they've all settled down to 50 or below um, as at close of business today. Well, the most likely they all. I'm talking about those particular four four stocks. Some others are still obviously at pretty sort of crazy numbers. So that's, that's, I guess, my thesis, that if I was to place um, a long straddle into the market, clearly that's not 30 days, I understand that. Um, but like I said, I wanted to wait for, for the volatility to kind of settle a little bit. Um, then, yeah, I'm hoping to see uh, volatility ex expand significantly and, and price um, the underlying asset, um, in this case the ANZ share price, to also move. Um, I think given... Um, Given where we are, it's got the possibility to move significantly in either direction, um, which way it goes, or whether it stays put. I guess only you know time will tell. Um, that's probably it, Patrick, from the point of view of my yeah, thoughts. Thank you. Yeah. So, just can I ask you a couple of questions? So, yeah, I bring this back to uh, back to the trading uh, to the market, but mm -hmm. the last reporting season. Um, was there, is there any, any examples you could give of trades that you did or? Uh, um, I've done it. Accessing? I've done a bunch of, I guess the short answer is I, there's no actual trades where I use my own money, but um, I looked mm -hmm. at um, uh, some of the trades that I had on my earlier uh, February um, spreadsheet and, you know, if I went back to, I did a bit of research, worked out, you know, looking at the company websites when the announcements were and went back, you know, my 30 odd days and how do I have place. And, you know, guys, just so you know, um, when I'm talking about how much money I actually put on the trade, I'm talking about less than 3000 bucks. So in the case of the ANZ um, pro, uh, trade I put on yesterday, it was like, I think it was a 10 lot. So we're talking about 2800 and something dollars. Um, so putting on a 10 lot and, you know, uh, February 2019 and let it run up until the March, um, whatever, the, whatever the stock was, you know, the, the March announcements, um, in the vast majority of cases, um, some profit was made and in some cases it was almost beyond my kind of wildest dreams. Um, just in terms of the particular trade that I've got on and for that matter, most of them are long, my long straddles. Um, in terms of when I would want to take the trade off, um, um, I, I run a separate set of, like a separate uh, workbook Excel again. Just, but I would look to, 
Um, and I've kind of calculated using that that Excel spreadsheet, you know, my, my break even on the trade, taking into account costs, uh, 20%, 30%, 50% um, profit after costs. And I'd, I'd actually look to get out of this ANZ trade, for example, if I get 25% uh, profit after costs between now and the day of the announcement, I'm out. Um, I don't, I don't intend holding onto it, you know, right up to the day. Um, and then, and as as I, as I kind of said earlier, the expiry date on these on this particular trade is actually the 28th of uh, May for an announcement on the 30th of April. So I've, even if I things went horribly wrong, you know, and I, I was asleep when the, when when um, the announcement was on and I hadn't actually closed the trade for some reason, I've still got 20 odd days to, for things to go well or for me to just you know choose to get out and take a loss. So, but from my point of view, 25% uh, profit after after costs for these sorts of trades and I'm like happy to take my profit. So on a $2,800 trade, if I get $700 profit, I'm, 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 that's, that's a good thing. A um, couple, couple of things and then I've got a whole bunch of questions for you. First okay, of all, mate. if you go back and uh, test what Brian's saying, uh, you just go to the back testing uh, section and implied volatility platform and just go back to the previous reporting season and take yourself 30 days before the reporting dates um, and play around with it. Right, and all you need to do is go into the cookbook. If you need any help with this, um, uh, just um, you know contact us, and we'll we'll help you through it. But you go into the cookbook and put in long straddle, and then um, and then just price up the trade. Right, so that that's the simplest way. I'm not going to do it now. That's the simplest way. Go back and test it. Go back through previous couple of reporting seasons, reporting periods, and 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 test it. Right. Um, and so if you're using the platform, great, you can go in there and do that. If um, you want to take a trial, just type in yes and we'll set you up to be able to do that and we'll give you access to all the other stuff that we, that we do, all right? But um, uh, that's, that's a simple way of doing it. Now, I'm going to get into some questions now. Apart from reducing the upfront premium, is there much benefit spreading out the straddle legs, i.e. shifting the, the call strike up and the put down? Uh, and as in creating a strangle, you're talking about? No, uh, uh, trying to pay less through. I imagine Ron's saying, you know, can you reduce the costs by going out of the money on both sides? Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, uh, I guess the further you go out, um, the cheaper it is. But the more the stock needs to move, or implied volatility needs to increase in order to get into your kind of profit zone. So yeah. I, haven't, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't actually done the, the analysis to work out whether I'm better off just to go straddles or whether off, I'm better off to go slightly out of the money. Yeah. So yeah, in, again, Rowan, uh, so there you go, there's the answer, play around with it, uh, but your delta will be lower, right? So um, you'll need the move to be uh, greater, maybe, I don't know, uh, play around. <laughs> Um, yeah. Could you send some info on how to make this table, Rafael? Yeah, I think um, we can we can coordinate that for you. Uh, Paul, g'day Paul. Do you ever consider entering at a time other than 30 days until earnings? And I, Paul's probably done a whole bunch of research about this and is about to tell us about it. So, but you answer that question first, Brian. Yeah, so I guess if you look at the, the, the table that I had up earlier, if you go back, you know, there's obviously a balance between how long do you want to have your money tied up for versus, yeah. um, you know, if you go back 10 days, that, that, that doesn't give um, the stock much time to increase. You, you're probably also starting to pay a bit more for uh, volatility because the, the volatility ramp up has probably already started. Um, so it's a bit of a balance. Uh, I'm not suggesting 30 is the only, the only way to do it. I'm just saying from my observation, you know, 30 business days seems to be where the volatility starts to ramp up. Um, I'm yeah. sure for some stocks it's less, maybe for some it's even more, but that's just my observation. Our volatility range on the XGO, let's just take the XGO, is like 10 to, you know, without anything, with everything just ticking along normal, 10 to 14, right? Just a normal, for an extended period of time, and it, and it did bump up every now and then. 
So there wasn't much of a range, so it probably didn't matter so much when you entered. I mean, stock are going to be slightly different, but there wasn't that range in volatility that you needed to worry about, so it was less of a consideration, whereas if volatility comes off at larger percentages, then it will have an impact um, on, on your timing, I think, right? So, you know, would you want it to have done this when volatility was, um, you know, twice what it is now on a stock? Yeah, probably not. It probably counts it out period of time. It's where it's coming off now, it's getting normalizing a little bit and um, you've got the upside on, on, on the trade. So okay. Uh, do you find that uh, IV increase in outpaces time decay at the 30 day out from earnings? Another question from Paul. Good question, Paul. Yeah, so if you look at um, the expiry date of the options, in this example with the with the ANZ trade I've, that I've got on, the expiry date's May the 28th. The uh, announcement is April the 30th, so there's a full, a full month, or let's say it's more 28 days, between um, earnings announcement and expiry date. So um, when you do your options uh, training, you'll, you'll learn that um, time decay uh, kicks in really the last sort of 15 to 20 days before um, expiry. So. Um, my thinking there is if you can open your trade, you know, well and truly 40 odd days out from expiry and close it, you know, 20 odd days out from expiry, you're not really getting hurt that much um, by uh, time, time decay. So that's also my thinking. All right. Um, you mentioned ANZ before, so I've got ANZ here and I'm just showing that if someone's on the, if you're on the platform or if you're not on the platform, you want to take a trial type yes and get on the platform. You want to work out how to price up straddle. Um, we go onto options cookbook and just type in long straddle. All right, click. Uh, so we take that out to 51 days, 28th of May. Yep. All right. Um, and so I've got that straddle priced up here, two dollars sixty-seven. Um, so sixteen fifty twenty-eighth of May call option, sixteen fifty twenty-eighth of May put option. All right? You can see the delta um, theoretical or the, the price for each leg. And you mentioned ten lots, so let's go and do ten. And I can see that my maximum loss, if you follow my mouth is over here, 2,670, my maximum profit is unlimited, right? Um, and let me close this down, right? So um, you can look at the payoff diagram. I'll just give us a bit more time, right? Um, so I can see that, you know, if it moves quickly, I'm making some money and, and so forth. I like looking at these in the matrix because it gives me the volatility override, right? And you're saying you would close, what date would you be out of this trade? What date was reporting? So it's the 30th, so I'd be out no later than the 29th or 25% um, profit, whatever comes first. Okay, so if the share price goes sideways, Nothing happens, volatility stays the same, and we just have time to go. I can't adjust my times, but on the 1st of May, um, it's I've lost $695 if everything goes sideways, right? Okay. Um, if I adjust volatility, am I expecting volatility to double in that period, or it could double? What would it normally do? Uh, well, from the other observations, it can go from single digits or, you know, teens to 60, yeah. 70, 80, whatever. So, yeah, that's well, that's implied volatility. I understand that's not volatility itself. So, in other words, you'd, yes, I'd expect a significant increase. Yeah, okay. So, um, if we're sitting at um, volatility at, say, an average of 50 and it went to 100, then you can see that um, we, we get some good returns. Um, across there, and then, but as time goes, it, it, it drops down. So if that happened quickly, there was a spike quickly, but it's probably going to happen like, you know, in the days ahead of reporting, then uh, I can get a good, really good return. If it just went up by 50%, 
I'm doing okay. All right. Yep. Um, in terms of price moves, one percent on ANZ is nothing at the moment. So um, you know, price move by itself um, can can have a, can have a, a, a good impact on that particular trade. One of the reasons I like Australia's is is just like if you can price yourself in well. Um, there's lots of options to getting out of the trade. It could be a move in the share price early on in the play. It could be a volatility spike later on in the play, or it could be a combination of both um, that allow you to trade your, your, your way out, out of your position uh, with a good profit. And you're also, you're trading against the clock. So you can see if volatility, like, I mean, what are the odds of volatility going down in that period? And let's remove volatility being a factor at all. But what are the like how 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 what are the chances of volatility from where it sits today being lower before expiry day on the say 29th and I've got the first here? Well, I've lost 695. Like I'm not losing my. Do you know what I mean? It's, I'm, it's, you're, you're able to manage your downside, I guess. Yeah. So you would you would sell back into the market and you would you would take a credit of you know, 1800, 1900 dollars, whatever it might be, 1800 dollars. And you'd lose your six ninety five. That was that's what you're saying. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Whereas I yep. could go to bed tomorrow if I'm taking a bullish position and wake up and you know it's it's you know the market's drops a, a thousand points or whatever in the states and whatever. And I you know I'm in a position where I'm giving away a lot of my. So it's it's one of those ones where I, I you know the, the volatility factor. I like the idea of being of how you manage it. Let me just say, Martin's asked, are you able to extract daily volatility figures into the spreadsheet automatically, or do the numbers? have to be entered manually? Um, I enter those numbers uh, manually. Yeah, so we've got to build a way for you to be able to download that. Um, yeah. that that's that for us to do. Um, one of the things, we've got um, a team of quants uh, joining us. Um, once we get through um, isolation mode, hopefully the people that rubber stamp this stuff will be um, back on and we'll have three uh, PhDs and, and one doctorate working for us and one of the jobs will be reviewing all trading systems and strategies and this is one of the first ones we're going to get our teeth into. So they will go back and back test everything in incredible amount of detail and then provide that report. The first person will get that report will be Brian um, but then we'll be able to make when we go into reporting seasons those types of reports available um, to all the employed volatility members. All right. Um, right. Uh, Carl, are the implied volatility values as at the close of the day? Uh, yep, so I go in typically 6 p.m. or thereabouts, maybe even later, sometimes later, um, Sydney time. So, um, and actually I've got a question maybe for Ivan, if you want to get your finger close to the mute button. Um, I, I notice if I look at the IV numbers at exactly 4 p.m. and then look at them later on, let's say two hours later, they're often different. Um, I assume there's a good reason for that, but I, I tend to use the ones at six around six p.m. Sydney time. Um, Carl, Ivan, oh, you got any comment there, mate? Oh. Yep, no, never mind. He, yeah, so, um, yeah. um, or he's um, gone gone to get himself a drink or something. Yep, uh, no, fair enough. Yeah, six, around six o'clock, mate. Six or six, six or seven p.m. Yeah. Um, okay. So, is there any? Is there a margin, or do you need to cover one hundred percent of the trade? This particular trade, it's um, you, you just have to fund it. Yeah. You fund and it. That's actually the, that's actually one of the advantages, isn't it? Of course, that your that your maximum loss is your initial investment. You're not going to have margin or any sort of crazy stuff coming at you. Yeah, that's right. Um. All right, so uh, Raphael, is it, which is a question for me, trade costs. So you have two legs of bro, uh, 24 at each leg. Um, so you have two legs in, two legs out. Yeah, uh, I'll say, I'll sort of answer, yeah. I was just saying, yeah, so 55 bucks probably total, not much, well, for, that, for that 10 leg trade. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rob, I, Brian, are you manually collecting all the IV data? Sorry, would you mind saying that again? Am I manually collecting it? Yeah. I yes, I am. Yeah, I am. So, yeah, um, 
every single night. There's been even nights where I've uh, forgotten about it and I wake up at you know 11 p.m. and go, God damn, I haven't done those bloody numbers, and I race downstairs and do them and go back to bed. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll be able to, uh, in the not too distant future, give you a way of getting that, uh, right. downloading that information. But Paul has asked, let me read the question. Okay, Paul's asked, do you know whether it is any better to your profitability to have the straddle options expiring shortly after earnings rather than up to a month after earnings if you are using monthly options? Uh, I don't, and I guess that's something maybe the quant, the quant work can actually help us out. I've looked at options, sorry, at, uh, stocks that have got uh, weekly options and thought, you know, should I make the expiry I mean, obviously the options aren't available 30 business days out, all, all of the weekly ones. Um, but, you know, am I better off to wait and wait till a Friday when a new set of options opens and make and open up a trade of the weekly options for those that have it, and there aren't that many, um, uh, immediately after earnings? And I don't know the answer to that. That's a good question that I'd, would be worth having a look at. So the impact on volatility, um, if you're too far out will not be there. Yeah, the pricing. I agree. So, yeah. Um, yeah, you definitely, uh, in this example, 28th of May would be no further than that. So there might, Absolutely. Be, yeah. there might be situations where things drop at the wrong time uh, and you, um, yeah, you need to, to, to think about that. Okay. Um, so Raphael, how much percentage margin is needed? So it's just the cash up front. Um, so calls and puts are basically buy and sell. Raphael says buy and sell. Uh, no, it's not buy and sell, it's long and short, um, Raphael. So you're going long and short at the same time uh, and your options value can increase, your volatility increases and you benefit from that or you can benefit from a share price moving, a combination of that and share price moving strongly in one direction or the other. Okay, Paul said, I rely on the IV increase to offset time decay while I wait for the stock to move. So the key benefit comes in getting a stock move. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you ever just buy calls and puts or is, it, is this a safer way hedging your bets for a better term? Okay, so Brendan's asking, do you ever just go long, you know, just buy a call or just buy a put? Yeah, that's a good question. So, so under normal in, uh, world situations when we're not bunkered down, I, I, I tend to go with the straddles um, because I don't need to look at them you know, minute by minute. Um, when I'm locked in my office, as we all are, um, I've been doing a little bit of uh, day trading, um, trying to read the charts and you know, actually go you know, buy a long call if I think the stock's going to go up. I might buy it you know, lunchtime and try and get out by the afternoon. So I've been doing a little bit of day trading simply because I'm in the office and I've got the screens in front of me, but when I'm, when I'm normally at work, I tend not to. I, I do the straddles or maybe Nine Condor or something where I don't need to look at the, look at the price quite so closely. Um, Carl, Brian has asked where does he get the IV data from. He gets it from our implied volatility uh, trading platform. Um, and we keep that and store that data each day. So uh, if you go into the back test, you can trade any options trade you want to trade over a very long period it's, uh, since back to 2015, since it's been stored. And that will allow you to test this type of strategy and go in and look at anything and see, okay, well, if I bought a long straddle 30 days out, like Brian said, he does, um, how much would I have made or what would have worked, what wouldn't have worked or when would it have been optimal for me to close out? Is 25% a good amount or should I be going for 50 or should I go for 200% every now and then and lose on a couple, um, you know, and play around with those different scenarios. But um, um, If you go to the strategy builder there now on the screen in front of you, you can pull up the IV stuff pretty quickly as you no doubt know. That's it. Um, I just go code. You can go IV rank if you want to look at the rank, but that's there. It is in the top right-hand corner of each of those coloured boxes. You've got the IV rank number, um, and that's that's the information I put into my spreadsheet. 
Yeah, so we, we'll be looking at uh, ideally something that the IV rank, rank is lower on, um, mm. you know, uh, you know, but but is going into a reporting period where we expect yeah. it to go higher. Yeah. So when we as we approach the August re, uh, reporting season, um, mm. you know, you'll have probably twenty or thirty. Um, I think there's seventy, um, including the two. Um, indexes, XJO and STW, I think the other one's called, there's about 75, I think it is, stocks with options. Um, and, you know, the majority of them report, as I understand it, August and February. So as we get into sort of, you know, the back end of June, you know, I'd be looking to, to probably place another one of these uh, straddles on any number of these particular um, stocks. Yeah. Um, so if you're going back to just quick, quick questions about implied volatility, uh, and obviously we've just gone through, um, this data is only back to 2015 on the IV side of things, and obviously going through GFC and so forth would be a lot higher. But um, so because of this massive move up in IV, uh, it kind of makes that chart difficult to look at and extract anything, but you can look at shorter periods of time, uh, three months, uh, one month, have a look at what's happened in the last five days um, to get a feel for where implied quality is and where you think it's going to go. All right. Um, so you, you don't have to just use IV rank when you're going and doing your analysis. You can you can go a little bit gran more granular. Um, I guess what I guess what IV rank gives you though is a sense of um, the current volatility relative to the volatility in the previous 365 days. So. You, if you, that's the, the beauty, it kind of normalises everything. So some stocks run high vol, some run low, but you don't know until you look at the IV rank number whether the, the today's uh, volatility is high relative to what it has been the last year or not. That's why I find it a fairly useful tool. <laughs> well, I've just sent you a text message to tell me that he's um, tapped out on his internet. Um, that's what happens from, comes from working at home. Um, <laughs> All right. Uh, all right, so uh, Rodney's asking, you send any education materials? Yeah, again, if you want more education uh, content, we can send you the little crash course we've put together recently, just type education in. Um, if anyone wants access to our platform, it's the most powerful technology in Australia, if you're going to trade options, there's obviously the back testing, all the IV data, implied volatility data, the options cookbook. Um, you know, all of the price matrix and payoff diagrams, it's all specifically built for options traders. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of our clients are, well, have just gravitated towards us because of the tech, are very experienced tra traders. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if you want to get access to this stuff, just type in yes to get a trial and we'll give you 30 days access to everything and you can boom, practice trade and pay trade and do all that kind of stuff. When you bump out of the session tonight, a couple of questions in there. Please give us some feedback on how you found the format of the session and the presentation. But we really just to know how you find how you find the format uh, of, of how we're running this, and and we want to make it an ongoing thing. So every uh, Thursday, Ivan and I run a trade group. We'll discuss the trades that we're doing in the market or anything that anyone puts forward. Answer any questions. Look at what's going on around. That happens at midday. Um, and um, anyone that takes a trial get access to, the, to those sessions as well. And we're looking at uh, one evening a week, it sort of depends on uh, our diaries, to invite uh, someone along to talk about their trading. Um, and we had um, Nathan Germain two weeks ago uh, who runs a small fund and he gave a fantastic presentation uh, on how he looks at the market and how he picks directions and the strategies that he uses. Really, really insightful. Um, and, um, uh, you know, uh, you, but, but anyone can come along to these sessions. So, um, you know, uh, Ron just said, to any non-members, I, I am a member and can vouch. The platform is awesome. Thank you for that, Ron. Much appreciated. Um, but, um, you know, if you, if you want to come into these sessions, just, um, you know, track the emails, you get our morning report, and uh, you can book in. We'll advertise anything that comes along. Let me just quickly run through, see if there's any final questions. Um, okay, Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel is saying we've done a couple of paper trades on the practice platform. Fantastic. Um, keep it up. Um, all right. Sometimes it's hard to get in a day trade due to margins. What are you buying for? 
a couple of hours. You're trading these calls or puts, e.g. expires, and are you buying in the money, out of the money, out the money, etc. So Brendan, um, uh, this particular strategy, we're buying at the money, right? And so that it's easier to get filled and to get good pricing because you're buying at the money. Um, uh, and so, yeah, it's, 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 it's usually very, very straightforward. It, it's going to come down to the stock that you're trading. Um, and um, Brian, I might ask you for a comment on that because uh, I tend to trade XJO predominantly, but you're doing more of the stocks. How do you go getting filled? Um, you're right. At the money, typically no issue. Um, um, I guess where you've got stocks that have got strikes, you know, 16, 16, 25, 16, 50, for example, and um, uh, you've got the price at, you know, 16, 30, you've got a choice. Do I go 16, 25 or 16, 50? It, it may depend upon your overall thoughts around what that stock is likely to do. Is it going to up or down? Um, I've got, a, I guess, a general um, belief that we've still got a way to go. There's still some downside, I think, in the, in the Australian market um, before this coronavirus thing's done. So, you know, I think ANZ and most other stocks, I could be very wrong. I'll, I'll, I'll either be very wrong or very, very right, I guess. But so um, I opened that particular trade, that 1650 trade, um, with the share price at 1628, for example. Um, so which is going to skews the payoff diagram a, a bit. Um, uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll just see. I mean, had it have been sitting at 16.50, had I been a bit more patient, um, I, I, might have, I might have done it there, there and then. I, I perhaps should have been a bit, a bit more patient and waited. Um, my thinking is, um, you know, for a modest gain, 20 odd percent, like I say, the, the IV ought to go up regardless of the price movement ought to be fairly substantial given the, the amount of volatility. So it's, this is a bit of a bit of a trial for me um, in terms, and it's, you know, 2,800 bucks. So if I'm horribly wrong, then I've lost 2,800 bucks. Does that, does that answer your question? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. All right. Um, oh, I've got something going on here. Um, Someone's just asked um, how they how do we monitor the trades. So if I say, um, let me get back to the question. I'm not very good at multitasking. Um, so what was the question? It was you were interested in, in seeing how we monitor the trades. Uh, you can do it a couple of ways. One is you're just you're waiting. You're, you're checking it every day. Um, the other is that you might want to be trying to capture a share price move um, and if that's the case you can simply enter into an alert to say you know if it's above a certain level or below a certain level or it's a percentage move um, send me a send me a, an alert um, there is and I think Carl was on the, on the session today Carl it's been built into my system but not everyone else's where I believe it's not being built into everyone else's. I'll follow up on that tomorrow. Um, if there's a, um, a change in volatility, we can set an alert around volatility changes as well. Um, not sure if you've seen that, Brian, in your version. It might just be in No, the, no. Yeah. no. So, um, I tend to use um, share price alerting as a way to, particularly when I'm at uh, work, when uh, you can't yeah, look so at the screens. Yeah. What you're going to be able to do is put, a volatility change alert in. So if you get that volatility change, it will send you a notification as well. So that's something that should be there shortly. Um, someone was just saying they were going to wait until they've done the education package before they take a trial. Yeah, you can do that. Um, but when you take a trial, we, what we do is we put 50,000 fictitious dollars into your account. And so you can practice trade uh, the market with that fictitious money. Um, so yeah, um, the, you know, just that, that's part of the education, right, is testing it and practicing it. The real education puts when you put real money into it, of course. Um, Rowan, so putting it all together, ideally you would place a trade when IV is low, yes, uh, 30 to 50 days out from announcement, uh, probably closer to 30. Uh, Brian, would you agree? 
Yes, I would. No, it's 30 business days. Yeah, 30, 30, 30 business days, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then exit the trade one to 10 days before the announcement or at a 25% profit. Yes. There you go, yeah, Ron. I'm, I'm spot on, yep. Um, Brandon, thank you. Uh, really interesting session. Rich, thank you for that feedback. Rich is saying uh, thank you. Um, all right, that would be great if IV Alert can be updated on my version. Thank you, Carl. I will get on that. It got the back end work got done, and then there there is an amazing amount of work going on on a project at the moment. It hasn't got through production. Carl, I will chase it tomorrow. Thank you for reminding me. Um, Rafael, so this trade will show we could need two thousand six hundred. So for this trade to show, to, to show a profit, Rafael is asking you, you would need two thousand six hundred and seventy dollars. Uh, to trade the trade that we've shown you, that is what you would need. That is correct, All right? Um, okay. That's uh, that. That is the, the that are the questions that have come through. Um, I'd like to Brian. Thank you so much for coming along tonight. Brilliant session. Um, I uh, love the work that you've done on it, and I'm going to be following it, and I'm going to be um, jumping in doing a few trades uh, using. Uh, your research, so I really appreciate it. I look forward to uh, bantering with you as we go through <laughs> the trade that we're going to do. Um, and um, uh, yeah, but uh, really appreciate it. Uh, on behalf of everyone that's on the session tonight, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, yeah, it really much appreciate it. Brilliant. You're welcome. Anytime. Good luck to everyone. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And for those of you that have requested a trial, We'll set you up tomorrow. Anyone that requested education will send all of that through. If you haven't, type in education, the education, or type in yes to take the trial, and we'll sort you out on that front. Uh, next week, we've got Graham O'Brien coming in. I think it's Tuesday, uh, Tuesday night as well. Um, so if you'd like to come along to that, you can book in off our website or off the, the morning report you get tomorrow morning. Um, and that should be interesting. We're going to put uh, asking Graham a lot of questions Obviously, there's been a heap going on in the market. Market makers have been uh, been tricky. I mean, that's all settled down now. But during that pe period of mass volatility, they, their jobs were very difficult. They're in a risky position. Um, so we'll get Graham in to talk about that. That'll be next week's session. And um, I think the week after, I've got a funds manager lined up. Just need to confirm uh, their ability to participate. So, guys, thank you very much for coming along. Uh, much appreciated and uh, as you bump out of the session tonight, please give us feedback. Much appreciated. If we know we're heading in the right direction, we'll double down and do more of it. Uh, but there's things that we can do in this format in how we're approaching it um, that, um, you know, I'll, I'll read that eagerly to uh, see what we can learn from it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Brian. See you, Thank everyone. You. Ciao. See you. Bye-bye.